very very critical and important because you know if you take search uh, uh, whatever people are thinking so search is known as the database of intentions so you know it's a closest man has ever come to creating a mind reading machine if you take social media it's a database of actions we actually get to know what people are doing based on what they're tweeting what they're putting on facebook etc so i think the insights you can get from search and social for taking you know business decisions is immense so venkat is going to cover beyond orm and i think venkat you can just give a little background over yourself for the desire and then that sure you have a uh, clicker no yeah is this on just a minute just check sure uh, okay so at the start uh, vivek asked me to uh, present something which goes beyond orm beyond online reputation management okay all uh, of a company value page what it does is we go track the internet and try and make sense out of it now when he asked like you know i don't want to hear anything about uh, reputation management tell me what else can you uh, you know is is listening can enable a company or anyone so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put uh, perspectives from different people different companies what are they doing here so that you know you can you can take away something like you know okay this probably may be applicable to my company <coughs> okay so this happened uh, yesterday like you know who wants to listen okay we know that you know people are interested in social medias people are interested in listening people are interested to take actions what is very interesting is uh, yesterday i think it's just about 24 hours if you tweet with a hashtag of uh, you know uh, 12th plan one one thing wants to listen to your suggestions so so this is a, a welcome change for uh, a company which wanted to ban the open view express uh, you know which is happening via social media so everyone is interested in social media including the prime minister of the country okay <coughs> so so let me just explain what is the reason behind all this so if you look at a timeline it all started uh, little over 6 years okay so the the top line is uh, the number of internet users okay the below is the number of uh, users of social media so if you look at this the users of social media are uh, close to 65% of uh, internet okay there is a jump before recession and after recession before recession it was growing okay okay and then suddenly it it boomed <coughs> so if if you look at uh, the same growth phenomena okay social media has been started uh, because of a company called dell the listening to social media has all started because of the company called dell because a blogger went online and started writing a huge blog of how a call center of a dell is a hell Okay, so so he wrote something like Dell Hell. I'm sure most of us know it. So Dell has faced the flag of uh, a blogger. It went mainstream, and from there, a uh, lot of from investors to customers to media went after Dell. So it took this aspect serious, invested a lot of money, did a lot of uh, technology outsourcing, got a team in place. and and took uh, encourage companies like radian 6 so it happened for about 2 years 3 years okay nothing happened major than that and then of all of a sudden people started going more to the internet uh, and and started writing tweeting just about anything so this was uh, taken as an opportunity by various companies and in various areas so i'm going to you know uh, throw some light on each of these so after 6 years today dell monitors everything by product by geography by category and by psychographics so it's got dashboards for everything so if you look at this dashboard it's got you know what is the sentiment right now on each product so from from a dell hell it's come to just tell so it took close to 4 and 1/2 years to mitigate the number of negatives coming on to uh, on the uh, company less than 3% sorry <clears throat> okay 
Okay, so so that's the only bit uh, that I have for reputation management. Now let me give some perspective on how actually companies are using. There's this company in Bangalore called 24/7. It's a customer care come call center service. It struggled a lot because of uh, the pricing issue. Everyone was charging lower, so it thought that it should have a differentiator. So what it does, what it did is mined Twitter, Facebook and all social media and went to companies and said, you know what, uh, on a daily basis, a site like Amazon gets 300,000 users asking something on the site. But everyone gets the same simple question saying that, what do you want? Okay, so it starts from very static FAQ related uh, you know, flow. So what it did was, it went to Amazon and said, what if I ask, I know that you had a shipping delivery because last week there was a goof up. That is the first conversation. <coughs> so this, it has successfully implemented for more than 40 companies in the US. What it does is, it mines the social media this week, and the call center guys are trained on what are the burning issues of that company, and they're ready next week. So, so this is one of the thought leader and pioneer in understanding social media, mining the social media, and applying it to a business process. <coughs> so it goes much beyond reputation management where I am not going and countering a person. Someone has tweeted that, you know, I don't like Amazon. 24-7 is not going and talking back to Amazon. What it is doing is, it is using this knowledge, training all its staff. So it claims that <coughs> the calls to the call center have reduced by 40% because of this. So there's a clear business case attached to this. And, <coughs> and, and uh, recently a lot of people have invested uh, close to 40 million in, in this company because of this thought leadership uh, activity that's done. <coughs> okay, so, so yeah, a company which is very uh, offline, traditional company, okay, it's also using social media in various ways. Okay, it is using in marketing and lead generation, which is a very surprising thing for us. So we've got a small video on it. Okay. essentially track leads on various social media. Product managers and sales managers respond to customer requests in a systematic manner. Okay, I, I think that was, uh, you know, what the point he was making is, uh, so, so they had a manual process and using Twitter and Facebook for lead generation for a company like Asian Paints is, is like, it's a surprise for me. Okay, uh, when I figured it out, like, you know, when I digged deeper into that, I figured that they're using an internal social network where all employees are, you know, enrolled in it. So they do track what is happening at the ground level. Like, you know, if, if a lot of people are asking for, say, a red paint in Chandigarh versus a green paint in Chhattisgarh, it is captured in their internal social network. Okay, so, so they started with their internal social uh, uh, introducing a social network into the company first, and then they started you know, uh, using it as a lead generation pl platform. <coughs> so most people know this uh, case study, but let me just anyways show you what Hippo has, you know, was able to do. Can you actually use social media to plug the gaps in the sales and distribution network in a huge country like India? Can social media get consumers to voluntarily work on the most technical aspects of a brand? Will brands be able to set up alternate sales and distribution networks using social media in the future? Hippo Baked Munchies may have found some first answers. Hippo Baked Munchies had a simple philosophy. 
to help establish itself in the $1.5 billion Indian snack market. Exceeding expectations, the packs were flying off the shelves across 400,000 stores within hours. As 92% of the Indian market is still unorganized retail, unexpected sales overwhelmed Hippo's new but efficient sales and distribution network, and they found it challenging to keep track of the stock, identify empty stores in time, and restock to match the super demand for Hippo. How do you support an overwhelmed sales and distribution network and help them cope with the demand for Hippo by the hour and plug the supply gap? Hippo turned to social media to do something that it has never been expected to do before. To track stock and reinforce a sales and distribution network. Hippo asked his followers on Twitter to send him a tweet whenever they couldn't find Hippo in stores and promised to replenish stores within hours. Soon, tweets were pouring in from over 45 cities. People were tweeting from hypermarkets, supermarkets and their local grocery store. Hippo set up a core set which instantly passed the information that came in as tweets to the sales and distribution teams of the respective areas. This way, Hippo was able to identify empty racks faster and restock locations within hours. Hippo gave regular meticulous updates on stock replenishment to the people who tweeted it and informed Hippo about unavailability at zero cost. The number of people tracking stocks across markets over Twitter were equivalent to 50% of its sales and distribution network itself. Hippo even sent out personalized anti-hunger numbers to the most active tweeters, complete with a handwritten note. And as people saw Hippo packs reappearing in stores on demand, Hippo's cult following on the internet began to grow. Blogs and articles began to pop up all over. Since demand was never a problem by matching it with supply, Hippo managed to up its sales by 76% in its first few months of launch. The campaign even helped Hippo identify gauge demand and prioritize its high potential new markets. While this campaign blurred the line between red marketing, social media and promotional campaigns, Hippo also effectively used social media to do what no one had done, reinforce and support its sales and distribution network. To sum it up, Hippo killed hunger and four birds with one stone. Actually, with one bird. Okay, uh, so that's a very interesting way to utilize, you know, uh, a very simple listening to what people are saying on the ground, on the, on the stores. The stores are wherever you can find the stock. <coughs> okay, there's another company called uh, Converges. What it did was, uh, it started listening to, again, the tweets and, uh, you know, Facebook updates. So whatever, whoever is searching for a job, or if the profile is interesting enough, it reached out to those, saying that, you know, would you be interested to be part of Converges? So, uh, so this is a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, approach, but it can lead to, you know, what was uh, being called as spammy social media practice also. But, but you know, if, as long as you limit the number of outreach programs, one uh, direct, uh, you know, uh, direct marketing to different one-on-one -on -one individuals, I think you're safe enough. So what it did was, uh, close to 100 people it used to reach on a daily basis. Okay, so if the profile is, uh, you know, uh, a VP level, okay, and he's tweeted like, you know, I'm very fed up with the job today. Okay, if the company, whichever is, whichever that guy is an employee of, if it gets back, it is online reputation management. But if someone else comes, you know, and addresses this, it could be called maybe marketing or something. But this was successfully done by Converges. This is a company called Visible Technologies. It's in the US, invested by WPP. Okay. So it focuses in three areas. Okay. The first area is retail. What it does is if you have, say, 1,000 retail stores. Okay. So in any of these retail stores, if anyone who walks in there has any tweet, and it's tweet or, or a Foursquare check-in or you know, whatever the location can be identified as, instantly the, the store manager gets an alert. You know what, go and talk to Vivek there who is looking for something. So it's specialized there and it claims that, you know, uh, the sales of the physical stores have increased significantly by that. So it's got a special practice area for retail only. Similarly for, for Pharma, claims that if you listen to what the patients are talking, not just 
the condition of the disease as in Vivek's words, the psychographics of it, what are they doing in the morning, what, are they do, what did they do yesterday and what is their lifestyle. Okay, they claim that the, the life cycle of development of a drug get, can get cut short. So it charges a lot of premium on this, but people are buying it. So that's one practical example. And the third one, which is you know, uh, as latest as December 2011, is you know, how social media, in fact, has saved lives in uh, Iraq war. So, so captains of war, uh, the army of the US in Iraq, have been provided by, with, by uh, the government with uh, a customized social network. So then they started a research. Okay, the research, what it did was, who is answering to whose questions on a particular topic more? So if I find that Mr. X is answering to all questions on IEDs, okay, next time whenever anyone asks a question on IED, show this guy up, show Mr. X up. So this way, what happened was, uh, uh, this, uh, there's this guy called Neil. You can do some Googling on his uh, name. So, so every time anyone says there is an armor, there is a shell, there is something looking like a mortar on the road, okay, instantly something pops up and says, why don't you ping Neil? And Neil can be anywhere in the world. Okay, so the demand for Neil has grown so much that you know, he had to be flown to Iraq and say that, why don't you be at the base? So, so, so this project has been funded by DARPA, that is uh, Defense Research uh, Projects Academy there. Uh, and it's quite, been quite successful. Now, the chief scientist which has developed this technology of pulling the best people okay, uh, for any queries, He's been hired by Jive Technologies. Jive is an enterprise social networking uh, company. So what they say now is, okay, uh, <coughs> in any company, in any organization, there will be a lot of experts. These experts are experts because of their experience on the field. Okay, but many times these experts are somewhere, you know, somewhere else, while the question is somewhere else. So what Jive does is, it uses the same example of what people have uh, done in Iraq and merges them here. So if anyone asks any questions anywhere in the world but belongs to your organization, the best person to answer this can be shown instantly. So the, the claim that uh, due to this, you can have uh, at least 5% increase in your bottom line. So we've not seen numbers, I have not seen numbers, but you know, it's a, it's a big bet. <coughs> There's this, uh, government company, government organization. What it does was it again has taken a, a network like Jive, introduced on its own employees, and it's got close to 60,000 ideas. Okay, so 60,000 ideas within. So what it says is I don't need to go to a research agency now. Okay, so my research can come from within the company. So instead of going outside, I'll ask my employees. Okay. The other one, the bottle that you've seen is the first company which has de based the entire product iterative process, the product insights and product learning and product iterations on Facebook. So, so if more votes come for a color that you see here than something else, then probably that box would have been, you know, colored that color. So they even have, uh, 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 you know, the, the picture is very small, but you can see a Facebook logo there. So people can go, see, click, view, you know, visit that and give feedback and then learn from there and do, uh, take actions. <coughs> this is a uh, local company here. So uh, Tata Motors, when it's relaunching this car, Indica, it wanted to understand like, you know, which features should I emphasize more and which features should I ignore and what should I use where? Because it's relaunching. <coughs> so it went and developed a custom framework. So we call it IR6 framework. So each statement of any user or non-user, anyone in social media, each statement is categorized into various ways. So not just neg positive, negative, neutral, but various categories. If they say that, you know, the air conditioning is bad at the, at the gear number two, at second gear, so it is categorized as, okay, there is, probably you need to rectify this feature. So instead of, instead of uh, you know, a black and white classification of positive negative, 
the market research team went you know behind this data so it started bucketing in different ways so that the decision making making can be easier you know when they when they go to the table so imrb has been commissioned and some other company which incidentally i run that's a disclaimer so so we both of uh, us took all the data so imrb does uh, uh, jd power sorry jd power does uh, one on ones and we collected all the data that's available out there and categorized in a way that uh, you know a senior manager sitting there can take decisions like you know okay tell me what marketing messages should i focus on so what has come out on this is value for money is primary you should not get away from your core proposition which people are saying that value for money is what indica is all about so but but their advertising company was suggesting that let's get away with this concept but data doesn't reveal that so so by listening it has understood that okay uh, it's a tough decision now okay the final decision no one knows okay it's a decision at the board level but this data has made the decision very very difficult yeah so a very interesting application of listening to social media it's an interview no no see uh, the fund has actually been launched and 40 million went into that okay because it's uh, uh, it's based in cayman islands no one knows the numbers after that so so uh, how much money it made did it make money or no i don't know but but this is a very good way to you know look at how the social media is shaping different industries and what actually we can you know uh, if if at all it can be used in a in a company or an industry like ours we are very tempted by the way like you know because i am in the industry of you know looking at all the information flowing very tempted to leave everything and just you know probably set up a fund <laughs> <laughs> 
So interestingly, uh, uh, we're going to add something to this. Uh, I know a lot of search professionals uh, who are actually working with companies or analyzing search patterns and social media patterns to even decide you know, the stock market movements of specific companies. So let me give you an example that, let's say a new iPad 3 is launched or iPhone 5 is launched. Now what happens is the Apple stock will depend a lot on the success of that device because these are you know, flagship products for the company. Now what happens is that if you have analyzed billion tweets of the past and know that if there is a battery issue, the sales will be 15% less than predicted. If there is a software glitch, it will be 5% less. If there are no glitches, it will be 10% more than what is expected. Uh, if it goes out of stock in primary stores, that means you are not prepared for the demand that came in, then where it goes out of stock, because when I go to an Apple store and I tweet, then listen, it's out of stock already, it's only been four hours, that means you know the profitability number is going to be hit by this percentage. So the thing is that if you take search signals and you take social media signals, uh, you can get that 1% edge, 2% edge that you're looking for as a hedge fund manager. So it makes perfect sense to at least guys like us who, who live and breathe digital. Because at the end of the day, what you need is that 2% edge, 5% edge, right? That if you can just predict that the numbers that Apple's flagship device is going to meet or not is based on the signals it's receiving because there are you know, 11 billion searches happening every month. There are how many tweets happening every month, uh, Venkat? I think daily it's more than 100 million. No. Yeah, so let's say 3 billion tweets happening every month. There is a lot of data out there. So the thing is that you can just say the word Apple, iPad 3, all the tweets meeting those two keywords is there with you. You know how the searches are growing. You analyze it. You can predict some numbers. And you already have that there were 20 launches of different devices happened in the last five years. Every device that was launched, which you have the quarterly numbers of those devices, when they faced a particular glitch, which is divided into 20 areas, this is the numbers, how they were affected. You recalibrate it, you get some kind of an idea what can be the quarterly you know, number Apple is going to meet thereafter. And this can be done for so many things, right? Uh, at the end of the day, even Warren Buffett, when he used to invest in the stock market, the word of mouth was a very important factor. And if he felt positive about a brand, he would invest in that brand for a long-term basis. Here you can get word of mouth on a real-time basis. So, you know, I, I, I was forcing Venkat to think beyond <laughs> online reputation management and he's far exceeded the expectations that I had. So, I think the opportunities are phenomenal, right? Yeah, uh, and yeah. I think uh, we are still at that nascent phase of social media listening. We've just started. Social media itself is only five years, six years old. And now the listening part of it is an industry. There's so many different opportunities that exist when social media listening actually becomes a part of DNA of all our organizations. So, uh, no, it's yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, there, there are, uh, you know, uh, this, this month, earlier this month, okay, uh, CI has come out with an open proposal from vendors around the world, across the world, saying that I need to track all the data available on the internet, so help me. So now it opens up opportunities like, you know, anyone sitting anywhere now can just go and, you know, stand in the queue for a project from FBI. You know, that's, that's the state of affairs right now. SEBI incidentally has, uh, uh, has an in-house project going on to track if the manipulations of stocks are being carried on from social media. So, so they started with Twitter. Okay, so anything on Twitter, so if there is a coordinated attack, okay, so, so if everyone is saying that Infosys is going to down, you know, go down and if we are all friends, for example, so there may be a chance that you know, we all are doing by purpose, by design. So it's got algorithms in place for this already. So, uh, you know, SEBI, again, this was kind of a surprise to me, but, you know, it, its eventuality is what I think. Okay, uh, lesser known company, Infosys. What it's doing in US, they launched a pilot program already. So, depending on my status updates on Facebook and Twitter, it's going to give me a weightage in my calculation of credit score. So my, my credit score now gets affected by what do I do on Facebook. So, so they published a paper. So the methodology is in place already. So doing pilots, okay, because uh, uh, FICO has this confidentiality agreements. We don't know the full algorithm. But you know, whatever is available, whatever anyone can extract, I just put them so that you know, we know, yes, there is something like this happening. Maybe it will take a long time for that to come to India. but. It's an eventuality is what I think, like, you know, taking from what 
uh, Vivek was saying in the morning, saying you have to be truthful in social media. There is no escape from being truthful. So if that is the case, then probably all the credit rating agencies in India can have a, you know, can leapfrog to tracking you socially and then, uh, you know, giving you a credit score. Okay, one quick announcement to make uh, because I see some people of the day. Uh, what we're going to do is that uh, we have an option to take a 50, 80 page print out of a book, give it to all the participants out here, which uh, how many people have tracked all the books they collected over the last how many workshops they attended, right? No one gets read. So what we're going to do is that uh, the presentation sometimes has a few words. But there's an explanation, there's a video, there's a case study, there's an article. So it's like references of a book. So what we're going to do is, based on the feedback that we've got from some of the participants, the questions they've asked, each of these sessions we're going to actually convert it into a PDF document with video links, with uh, links to certain articles. Uh, if Venkat is talking about a certain thing, he's mentioned three companies, it's better to give you know links of those companies, the videos we've seen, because to create one hour of content, sometimes 10 hours of research goes into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give all the you know glossary and all the things in it, put it into a PDF. I think uh, either the ad tech organizers or people who would like that uh, thing uh, can meet Vikrant in the first row or just put their cards. We will send, it'll take us about two or three weeks to prepare this, but when you get it, it will be a reference guide which you can access. If you want to learn more about ORM and what are the things beyond ORM, and you want to make a presentation to your CMO, <laughs> you'll get a lot of dope from these presentations. And I'm sure that your job in life will become definitely simpler. Sure. Yeah, so, so with that I conclude, like uh, I personally think that social media listening has just begun. So, so if you see from 2005, not much has changed until the last, you know, uh, in the last, uh, like, like what, how it's changed in the last two years. So from 2009, we saw a lot of creative applications of this listening. So before that, it was just the PR division, the corpcom division in a company driving social media, you know, uh, end to end. Now, different industries have come. Okay, the same company, different departments have joined the fray and they're making use of it, you know, very creatively. Now the problem is, is it's very easy to monitor. You know, you pay some money to your vendor and he will, you know, give you all the data in some anal analytical form. What is very important in my personal view is, we need to understand what are, why are we doing listening? Like, you know, what are the business objectives? Like, you know, are we going to get any benefit out of this? So, so one example says that, you know, you can change the shape of your call center by routing you know, you know, uh, the social media knowledge into the call center. So one says your product can be much better. One says like, you know, I can, I can, I can uh, encash all the negativity on my competitor. So we need to be really clear on how exactly this can be utilized and applied. And for this, you need to really look at the organization from some, some feed above so that we get a sense of what's happening. 